Hey, how's it going? Today we are going to be looking at the common input, which is part of the common UI. It basically dynamically will change the icon shown on the screen based on what kind of input type you have in. All right, so sit back, hit that subscribe button, and let's uh, get into this. Okay, so step one, we are going to open up plugins and enable the common UI plugin. And once we enable that, we are going to restart the engine. Okay, now that we're back into the editor after it restarted, we're going to go into project settings under engines. We're going to find general settings. We're going to change the viewport mode. Common game viewport client. This is going to change how the how input is routed so that now it is routed automatically to the highest widget. Think of like a store in a game and a pop-up confirmation pops up. It will automatically route it to that pop-up. It's really nice and it enables better navigation. Okay, now to actually set up the common input settings. Uh, first, we're gonna set up this input data. Now, a good way to get started is to duplicate the generic one built in. I'm personally gonna, we're gonna make our own and then we're gonna copy some from the library project. Okay, so we're gonna make our own input data. Uh, hitting the new button doesn't work at the moment, but let's hit blueprint new, and then let's come down here and just look up common UI, and we'll get this common UI input data, and that's what we're gonna create. And let's name it our input data. Now that that is made, uh, let us set our input data to the one we created ourselves. All right, and now let's uh, set that data up. Basically in here, this is gonna use our a data table that is going to have all of our common UI inputs in it. And that's what we're going to set up next. But this input data only needs the action and uh, like the call action and the back action. And that's basically going to be the confirm deny. Other widgets we can set any action to. Uh, here's an example of the generic uh, widget and that has all of the buttons assigned. But here you go. Let's make one. Uh, just so you can see, and we're going to call it our common gamepad. Okay, and let's just add one. This is going to be for our input confirm. And then we're going to create another for input back. This took me a minute, so I'm going to skip over it. But the you can look at the generic data table to see how I filled it out. All right, and now we're just going to assign those buttons here. So the data tables are data table, and then the row is going to be whatever you call it, except back. Um, and then the back button. Once all that's set up, you can actually now fill out the platform specific data. This is where this is really powerful. You can use it to basically automatically remap and re and change the widget that's being displayed depending on the platform. So like Windows, you can have both your keyboard maps that need to be shown as well as your gamepad maps. And depending on which input is being used, it's going to swap between the two or not show a widget or show a widget, depending on how you set it up. Uh, but this is what we're gonna set up now. We're gonna create a new widget, and these are called the common input base controller data. And basically what they support, they store is the images of the buttons that we're gonna be pressing uh, for each controller. And that way, when we swap a controller, it can show the correct icons. We can also select what type of input it is. So if it's a gamepad, keyboard, touch, etc. All right, let's just, let's pretend I filled all that out. And now what we're going to do is we just make sure that that platform data is assigned to the correct platform uh, in our common input settings. That is all we would need to do with those is assign the icons and then assign them here. If you need an example, open up the library project and they have full uh, button maps for Xbox, PC, etc. Okay, now we're going to create a widget to display what exactly is happening. I'm going to skip over the part of me adding this widget to the uh, level um, to the level blueprint, just because I'm just making it auto spawn. Um, but here we go. So we're just going to add a widget. We're going to add the common common action widget. Once we have that added, we're just going to go over here and we're going to assign its input action. This just reads the data table that we created, and then we tell it which action should be assigned to this. Now, we're not going to see it in the editor, but now if we show this widget and we had a gamepad connected, it's going to show it. Here we go. Here, I'm switching from Xbox controller to PC. When I just use my keyboard, it shows nothing because I have nothing assigned. 
when I have the Xbox controller, it shows that button. And that's pretty much it. That's all we have to show. Like, the buttons are that easy to set up, and it is automatically switching. Here's kind of an example of Fortnite where they would use it, like this X button or the dynamic uh, controller buttons that disappear, depending on if you're using a controller or not. Um, as an example of where you could have it. Uh, the Lyra project has some as well. Um, and there's other common UI widgets that aren't part of this common input um, that I hope to cover in the future. But yeah, hopefully that covered the basics of it for you. I know I skipped around a lot. If you want to look at the data tables, things like that, look at the Lyra project. It has fully filled out ones. And I wish you guys luck.